Oh my goodness! How is everybody doing? Back for another exciting beta read. This should be amazing. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, busy month. We had a busy month just wrap up, and oh my goodness, I am excited to get back into the swing of things. Uh, I got a few beta reads coming my way right now. Uh, let the month begin. Oh my goodness. So, uh, really quickly before we go into this, you know, let's get a few plugs out of the way. Like, subscribe, do what you gotta do. And here is some books, some books of mine. So interesting. Bright Dreadful Sun, my third book. Oh, wow. Not Every Star in the Night. Oh, my goodness. And, of course, The Yamikage, my first book ever. So many books. And I actually just read another one uh, called The Modern Kama Sutra, which is just the most interesting thing. Uh, so that's one of those books you actually had to kind of like research for, uh, check for plagiarism. It's not fiction. That's my first book I published. It's not fiction. And uh, wow, uh, double check you're working with the right clients. But anyways, uh, we're not here to talk about my books. We're here to talk about your books. Pew, pew, pew. So with that being said, one second, I want to give a big shout out. One sec. <laughs> Let me uh, find the name of the title. I, I definitely want to see if the, uh, the book has a title here. One second. One second. Uh, Jay-Z Pitts. Oh my goodness. And I believe it's Jake. Sorry if I'm getting wrong. Jacob, thank you so much. Wow. Oh my. Oh my. So, uh, wow. So in case you guys haven't seen the channel already, very interesting. Um, I'm a five-star beta reader, ghostwriter, editor, published author, and now we're doing the CEO of the startup publishing company. So with that being said, as you guys know, uh, a beta read on Fiverr, Upwork, anywhere else can take hours and hours. And ours. But what we got over here is kind of a compressed, compartmentalized, small speed read kind of version of a beta read. So with that being said, it's almost like I'm kind of opening it up for the first time as a reader. And I'm very excited to do this because I didn't think we did a beta read video last week, but we did a lot the two weeks before. Like I said, uh, busy, busy. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. Going from the top. Uh, th that being said, let's go. So we got chapter one right here at the top. Uh, this is, of course, I believe, a working title, not published. It's not one of those reviews we were doing last week. We're, uh, ladies and gentlemen, beta reads. Beta reads reviews, two different things. But uh, yeah, happy to do both. Okay, so uh, title page, obviously. I'd love to see a title page. What I love here are the margins. This is like, uh, and as you guys know, I don't read ahead. This is literally just me uh, opening up for the first time. But one thing I did, just it just popped out of there, is just these beautiful one-inch margins. Oh, my goodness. I just like seeing those. <laughs> Uh, so with that being said, if you're sending a draft out to somebody, it's not formatted, it's not edited. Having these nice thick margins is a great way to kind of like uh, up your presentation a little bit, especially for uh, you know when you're sending it out to beters, it just makes the reading experience so much more nice. So uh, with that being said, we're beginning on dialogue. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, I usually recommend opening it up a little bit, kind of starting with aesthetic, getting the setting in there. I do like when people open up with characters. So we open up with a dialogue. <laughs> it's another character speaking to a character named Ava. Pretty interesting. Very excited. Don't forget to elevate character profile, get those appearances in there. And then we're beginning with setting. Uh, I would reformat it because, you know, as you guys know, uh, first paragraph, first sentence, first chapter, first page. Very important real estate because you definitely want to make sure you're hitting it on all cylinders. So double check you're getting all those literary elements, really putting your best foot forward with this. You know, can you include like a more uh, if expansive setting? Can you include more detail? Maybe some sensory detail. I love seeing sensory detail. So uh, we have voice here. That's a great, that's great real estate to kind of elevate. Um, Man, if you can establish genre within the first uh, page, that is awesome. So let's uh, let's go with that. Ava, breakfast is ready. Usually that first line too should also be almost like uh, kind of setting an aesthetic, almost like that really big symbolism in a way. I love when people can really open up a novel and it's just got this like uh, aesthetic, prime aesthetic setup, this nice, uh, this nice, wonderful uh, setup. You know, love that. But uh, here could definitely use some work. Uh, presentation, watch out the onion chops. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, so I've been ch calling these the cheeseburger paragraphs, those healthy five sentences, although cheeseburgers aren't healthy. And then the sandwich paragraphs, which are those three sentences. Right here we have onion chops. Onion chop, pop, pop. Uh, not best to open a novel with. I would reformat, get a nice cheeseburger paragraph. Uh, right below this we're seeing, let me get my mouse. I wish I had a laser pointer. Did you? Oh, also my screen is over here as well. I got two of them. Uh, so, yeah, that's <laughs> if you see me looking over there. Um, that's why. So if we're looking at, uh, I place my hand against the glass. If you combine this paragraph and this one right here, I'm not sure how long. Put that together to make one nice cheeseburger. Delicious cheeseburger. I would rather see that, bam, front and center. Because uh, Ava, breakfast is ready. Uh, really obscure, ambiguous. Uh, double check. Our dome uh, right there. 
That right there, elevated setting, that could take up an entire paragraph just right there with those two words. Or dome uh, is small. You could really open that up because, you know, that's opening up so many different questions right there just off the bat. Uh, what is dome? What's going on with the dome? Or the living in a dome? I'm sure it's this. This is already kind of cluing into maybe a sci fi type thing because we see those biodomes and all that. All the time, uh, but with that being said, if this is sci-fi, like I said, I'm reading from the from the get-go. Uh, the goal there, especially with sci-fi and fantasy, is to make the foreign feel familiar. Foreign familiar. Make the foreign feel familiar. So with that being said, make the foreign feel familiar there. Let's uh, look, take it slow. Take it slow. Uh, coming, I reply. You know, open up that character profile. Definitely before we start creating tension, before we start movement so much. Double check that we're following because we want love at first sight, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want to like a character. We want to love a character. So uh, that's definitely a part of it. Take it slow. Make sure these elements are in place. Uh, I reply. You could definitely use elevated dialogue tags there. So with that being said, sensory detail, metaphor, oh, nonverbal. So many different things you could do. Uh, so with that being said, double check. Now, set is dead. We know that. But at the same time, um, there are certain areas, okay, it's not necessary all the time, but where these dialogue tags could be elevated right there in these hot spots, these prime real estate, such as, you know, these first initial uh, pages. If I could see some really beautiful dialogue tag, I can tell, you know, hey, uh, author knows how to do them well and execute them well. And then later throughout the novel, when I see the onion chops, I'm kind of like, okay, well, th and they know how to do it. Okay, so I'm not sure. I've been sitting in my bedroom window, elevate setting, wondering what a real sunrise looks like. Okay, very interesting foreign concept. Foreign concept. Slow down. Uh, spend some time with that. Mom assures me the lights on your projections outside of the dome are very similar to the real thing. Interesting. Okay. I would like to see these character profiles elevated, but I like how they're opening up the world building. Really good. I like that. Uh, I place my hand against the glass and the digital brightness and indicator material is next to my hand. Ooh, that's pretty interesting. Maybe some color in there. Pshoo. <laughs> I tap the button on my indicator and the window turns into a darker tint, dimming it. That's exactly what it should be doing. Uh, it should be opening up uh, the world building here, especially with sci-fi. That's so important. Um, uh, Carl Sagan wrote a book called Contact, very similar to Game of Thrones uh, by George R. R. Martin. It's kind of like the sci-fi version of that in a way. Uh, where he's doing the same thing George R. R. does, where like every paragraph is just a little tiny bit of world building. It's amazing. Uh, definitely uh, read those books because like you see every single paragraph, all the elements that are present. Uh, I'm seeing that right here when I place my hand. Uh, we really pick apart these first pages and then it kind of just gets moving. Uh, I grip my Q wheelchair's push rims. That's interesting. That is interesting because that that's usually not part of the character profile disability, but it definitely is. You know, it, it is part of a character profile. It's actually very important, and that also nails a unique characteristic, which is definitely great for main characters. Love that. So I grip my wheelchair, elevate a little bit. So she's in the future too. So how does a wheelchair look now? Double check that. Uh, it takes like more effort to do this in my bedroom. Looks like living room, kitchen, carpet in the front. All that thing. Interesting. Reading, reading, reading. Maneuverability. Hmm. All right. So uh, dad passed away. Slow down. And get that in a different thing. Uh, different paragraph since my dad requested the committee of the dome also same thing take that a little bit slow uh and maintenance hearted engineering floor and the carpet so we got it this is all uh, this paragraph is nice it's got a lot of potential but it's a little bit scatterbrained and subject so uh double check you know give everything their allotted time especially when it needs it especially these primary real estate spots uh, apparently they have a big list uh so it's not too things you know uh paragraphs often they have subject uh, there's actually a lot of paragraph templates that work so well, you know, like the first sentence and second sentence uh, Definitely playing with a lot of those. Uh, I could have done it all by now Okay, so now we got some onion chops coming our way uh, Double check smile rolling my root Dan in the computer He wasn't in the government government is part of world building ladies and gentlemen good 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 love the authors including government Let's take it slow. Let's let's see what that's about um, That's gonna add to that memorability factor, which is definitely what we're looking for especially in sci-fi because especially sci-fi and fantasy, how many times do they blend? So many times. I can't tell you how many manuscripts I've gotten of the medieval fiction, the Game of Thrones type of stuff. Oh, I've been getting buried in them. Uh, so the point is to make your world stand out. Bring in these concepts that we see familiar, but also, you know, make the foreign feel familiar in your own unique way. Uh, so not fan of this coming up. Uh, this, these little onion chops, especially since they're not dialogue, they're narrative. Uh, I was sweet, didn't want to do that. The living room is full of wood, and the kitchen is linoleum. Managed to get around well enough. Nice of you to show. Nice of what it says. Uh, maybe get some voice in there. Uh, double check that. I've actually never seen. Uh, I would rather not never, but I haven't seen this this onion chop uh, description that vibe for a full body paragraph. Uh, you know, evaluate things on a level of purpose. This is the first page, so that's why we spent a lot, a lot of time here. So like this dialogue could be elevated. Uh, these onion chop, this where this uh, it was sweet for him to do that. No need for that, you know. Uh, 
in terms of importance is the carpet in the room very important uh the government is very important i would stay with there the dome kind of thing the, the that kind of world building is very important stay with there let's get some character profiles elevated um the fact that she's disabled is very unique characteristic i actually have not seen that in quite some time uh or i don't think ever yeah i've never received the manuscript with a disabled person I've actually <laughs> uh, collaborated with an author that was, but that's pretty interesting. Ava, breakfast is ready. Like, understand like a uh, scale of importance as well. Like, uh, look at the grand scheme of things. Is that breakfast really important to the story? It's not. Uh, well, maybe it is. I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, I would definitely, I would reformat that first one because I think the strongest one here is definitely. Uh, one second. Uh, I place my hand against that. That's great. Sci-fi and genre indicative. Love that. Uh, sitting at the bedroom window. Uh, that could be combined into a different paragraph. Uh, you can actually combine it right there, bubbing bubble. Uh, I grip my wheelchair. I take this side for Now, I grip my wheelchair is pretty interesting, but it, it, once it gets to several months, I uh, have passed away. So that should be a separate body. That should be a big focal point. Uh, when we see a uh, paragraph like, oh, it's not even a paragraph, it's a sandwich. Uh, I smile, rolling out of my room, remembering dad. And just take it slow. Uh, the committee is number one. That's very important. The committee's there. The character profiles need to be there. Um, but double check a lot of this stuff. A lot of this stuff could be omitted, uh, especially th this this little onion chop is full wood. Eh, full, full wood. Full wood. Uh, Ma doesn't say anything. And there's also a lot of characters here. So we're opening up with three characters on the first page. So mom, dad, uh, Ava. Uh, pretty interesting. All right, let's move on. Uh, first page, you, you get some more attention than the rest. Then we kind of start coasting. I uh, stare nervously at my mom's fuchsia's deep auburn hair. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Elevating character profile and appearance around her shoulders. Uh, mm, mm, could definitely open that up a little more. How oh, I missed the genetic cocktail. Utero came under play and straight beyond here. I never know. In utero. Okay, so that's uh, with an injection. That's pretty cool. Uh, I like that. Or a little bit of world building. We actually have that nowadays too, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it's definitely a genomics and all that is getting up there. So I'm glad. I'm glad more sci-fi is coming out, dude. I love when people like can research like modern day genomics and all artificial intelligence and all that. Really throw that in the novel and then elevate that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not bitter or anything. Stylizing. Author knows how to stylize. Very good. Very good. Uh, stylize your chapter bodies. That could help uh, the chapter titles. I'm not bitter or anything, you know, inter uh, italics used to show internal dialogue, but uh, a lot of people use them for stylizing. Uh, I was just, uh, also double check too, because we have the italics opening up an internal narrative, and then at the same time, the internal narrative continues with quotation marks. Uh, let's double check. I was just warm out today, Lance, internal. oh no, no, it's not internal. What is it? Uh, a little ambiguous there. Uh, you weren't cold, were you, mom asked? No, that, okay, that was external conversation, a little tricky there. Uh, Mom S, don't not turn around. Hear the soft clink, clink chink. Uh, okay, uh, that could be misinterpreted as a uh, you know um, a racial slur. You know, I'm Asian. Uh, I wouldn't think of it like that, but it could be like oh, you know, <laughs> you could my you know my knock somebody back a little bit. Uh, so double check that in your windows. Uh, believe it or not, I just got pro writing aid. It will tell you that. It will give you like uh, in your windows. Uh, b business jargon. It'll give you all these different things. So double check, you know, because that could really turn a reader off. Uh, not me, but. It's fine. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> uh, she turns to face me, holding a plate of cake in her hands. Happy birthday. Okay, so it's her birthday. Mm, pretty interesting. All right. It's a weird feel. Never forgets, but she's not always in the mood to celebrate. Happy birthday, Ava. Okay, let's get her age in there, too. I definitely want to see it. And now we got two sisters here, so we got five characters. I'm hoping to see it stay there. Okay, uh, page two. We got five characters in the mix. Uh, thanks, guys. Stay with went. Plug in my ears. I'd still like some more elevation on the character profiles. Sophia is seven. There you go. But let's see that for the main. Uh, right out seven. Right out seven. Um, with a mess of curly like red hair. Face smooth. Sarka. Okay. Interesting. Presentation. Uh, author did uh, tell me a little bit about presentation. Pretty interesting. Just uh, watching onion chops. Onion chop chop chop. Uh, especially when it comes to these narratives here. Uh, that I can't help but grin at her cuteness. Get uh, get those full body cheeseburger narratives in there, you know? Uh, very good. Uh, the mind loves symmetry. The mind loves symmetry. So when each and every of these pages kind of got like these odd uh, asymmetrical presentations, uh, it could be a little bit, in, uh, a little. And also that's such valuable page space. A lot of people, uh, they, th they vie for that because they think it'll add a uh, page shot. Not saying this author's doing it, but I see that all the time where they are uh, the double space or they'll just include these and then enter. Uh, that's valuable page space. You wanna you wanna preserve that. You don't you don't wanna water it down. You don't wanna dilute it. You want to solidify it. 
Uh, so with that being said, all authors out there, double check you're not, uh, you know, <laughs> putting like onion chops and all these uh, things that don't need to be there. I need a shower, I say. That's on. There's the kitchen. I sweaty musk lingers. Uh, uh, sensory detail. Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, describing the dad's smell. Uh, don't want to smell it in particular, but I, it's sensory detail, so it's good. Uh, good to have sensory detail in the mix. Oftentimes, uh, specifics work very well with sensory detail. Uh, some icing off the cake. My mom checks the cake out of his hand. I got it holding up surrender upon your cup of coffee. Interesting. I'm hoping I, I, I want to. I would rather uh, see the world building open up. Uh, that's something in sci-fi because you know eventually we're going to get to the characters and their nuances. When I get when I receive a sci-fi manuscript, uh, I want to see that world building expansive. I want it like beautiful. Uh, it, I'm really kind of peppering this in here, but slow down with the conversation a little bit. Uh, sniffs the coffee, grinning. Like I want to see if I get a sci-fi novel, I want that first. I want everything to be elevated and curtailing to genre. Uh, as I open up, because you know, eventually we get into all the nuances, all these little conversations. They're inevitable. Uh, nice sensory detail. Uh, love that. Author's got it in the tool belt. Great to see it there. All right, he's singing me happy birthday. My dad bellows. Maybe some uh, elevated character profile there. I grin. I want to see more of the uh, more of the main. Cuts the cake, biggest slice. Like if this cake was, mm, I don't know. Maybe you can get some world building in there in a way. In a way. Uh, I don't know. Now flavors change. Mm, flavors change, so maybe it's a little bit different there. I don't know. All right, so I don't want to interrupt the party. What's going on, Mom? I saw her not contented. She grins. And, uh, dad takes it. Yeah, so I would stay away from these onion shops. Uh, a very common thing. Nothing to be worried about. Progress has been made. I recognize the voice and delivering. It's a 3D projected. There you go. I want to see that. That's what I want to see. Uh, giving the illusion of a woman shot or short cropped hair with a tan business suit in her living space. Is this President Marcia? Uh, okay, six. Six characters. I would kill one of the <laughs> I would kill the sisters. Or at least one of the sisters. That's what I would do. Or bring them later. I would I mean, I would love to see the world building, then have like the the you know, the side characters introduced. Um, okay, you know, because we're here for the we're here for the world building, we're not here for the characters. Uh, especially the side characters. Okay, on the app on the phone, but it looks down, the phone an unusual amount of concentration. Same with unique characteristics too. You know, let's get some unique characters. Like we had their hair color described. Uh, that was kind of like the uh, common denominator in their uh, appearance description. Open up some more. Uh, yes, mom says in a much louder tone. The president is standing, the president. Oh my goodness. So government is part of, so there's a lot of good things that are happening intuitively here. So I'm, I'm just kind of checking these off. Okay, government's in there. Uh, I want right here, I want to see it elevated. Because of our 3D projector, the knee-high blades of grass. Ouchie. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, okay, because my administration's hard work, our partnership with Ogunthaliti. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that one second, one second. And your continued uh, humanity, sacrifice for humanity. Ogunthi are aliens. Pretty interesting. Sophia asks, you guys should already know this. That said, I'm not going to do it. Is this the only history they teach in school anymore? Um... Is this the only history that matters anymore? Interesting. All right. All right. All right. So back to foreign concept. <laughs> foreign concept. Uh, we have a foreign name here called, that I can't even pronounce. Probably uh, Ungolithi. Uh, pretty interesting. So science fiction. We get these manuscripts all the time. Same with fantasy. Uh, foreign words. Foreign names. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, but let's double check. You know, is there a rhyme and reason to it? They don't have to be one. When it's there, it definitely helps. When there's some sort of system in there, because how many times we go, you know, uh, why, why did you choose this name? And they go like, I don't know. It sounds cool, <laughs> it's, and then it's kind of like, all right, okay. Well, you know, I, I would love, I love a rhyme or reason to foreign names and all sci-fi. Uh, you know, maybe you could base it off something. I don't know. I've seen so many people do really cool things with that. Like, uh, maybe they'll take like Latin and reverse it, put it backwards, or like some just some really interesting stuff there. Uh, George R. R. Martin, for, he famously came up with his own language. I don't know. Same with uh, James Cameron, <laughs> but he's not an author. Uh, I think he is actually, uh, but he's not famous for that. They're famous for Avatar. I roll my eyes. That's it. So uh, right there, kind of a tell. We don't need that. I roll my eyes. That could be expanded. You could easily make this one at the top here. A cheeseburger paragraph. Nice and delicious. Oh, uh, we're hitting the 20 minute mark. Okay, let's try to keep this under 30 minutes today. I'm not gonna get through all of it, uh, but let's see. President Mercier. Let's elevate the president uh, character profile. Definitely want to see that. My dad snorts. Nothing doesn't need to be there. President Mercer stands, or expression more serious. That doesn't need to be there, unfortunately, today. Uh, there's a lot of regions to pull back and then elevate more. Uh, get the focus where it needs to be, which is kind of like right here, but there's a lot of nuances, like kind of being choppy in between, uh, kind of acting like uh, stop signs. 
that fine looks in the plate and you know, anything like that doesn't need to be there unless it has purpose make sure everything is writing with purpose on like the most popular science fiction films there's no way apocalypse right there's no plenty of resources no genocide our species instead of global and united so it's like it's kind of like these this world building is crashing into this uh this kind of small nuanced little birthday party um I, I, the execution could be a bit more solid there a little bit more, more glue we don't want glue words but we want cohesive uh, everything working together um, um no it's appreciably dead is still as a statue now i'm sure he's bleeding uh fellow americans what is going on uh sorry my fellow americans president mercy continues so she was in that's a little confusing she was in the living room now she's like giving a commentation our proud to progress humanity or maybe this is like some sort of like tv thing uh it's that dissonance there. Careful. This is what it means by making the foreign feel familiar. Uh, kind of like the scratch in the head feel, like double checking. It should be a smooth ride, basically. So that's why taking it slow is very important. Uh, Privacy takes firm care. Then go and think realizes not even take yeah, regressive ways. The people are looking interesting, interesting. The president's image fades, okay? Um, tell, not show. I would like to see how that works. You know, really take it slow. Like, is there a sound effect or, you know, like, is it blue and then she's it's slowly fading out? Um, you know, science fiction tends to be one of those uh, really wordy uh, type of genres. It really do. Uh, and I love that. I really do like that about science fiction. Because when you hit it in the nail, when you build the right world, you want to stay in there. And right here, it's close. Uh, but I think this this little uh, nuanced conversation is kind of bogging it down a bit. Same with the dialogue. The dialogue's not elevated. Like, of course not. Like, that can go. Uh, make sure your dialogue is moving plot, contributing to setting, contributing to character development. Uh, everything should have a purpose. I have the uh, harmonic writing video on the channel. Feel free to check that out, ladies and gentlemen. Out of my wheelchair. That's going to be interesting to describe non-verbals, dude. Oh, th there's a lot of fun you can do with that. Oh, my goodness. Um, black image changes, morphing to distinctly human shapes, staying in the middle of the living room as a silhouette of a tall man. So this is kind of like their uh, Star Wars type of cell phone type of thing, FaceTime. FaceTime of the future. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so we have what might be symbolizing a dinkus at the end the hashtag that can go uh that doesn't need to be there uh so dinkuses are used to show the specific passage of time uh chapter two nice okay we get to go to chapter two nice very cool very cool so i asked for one and then i asked for a little bit more i'm glad i asked for more because now we get a little more piece of the pie yummy yummy uh, i've got a feeling that this chapter could be easily combined into the last because that last chapter was pretty short uh, so let's double check there. President Mercier is a liar. That's a tell, not show. Uh, I would eliminate that. I'll really elevate that. Get a nice cheeseburger, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, get in, you know, get into that habit of really elevating those transitions in and transitions out. Uh, kind of like a, I compare it to music. You know, when you hear a song on an album and it fades out, the next song fades back in. Uh, sometimes when that effect happens, it's, it's wonderful. Shadow's voice. So we got a little bit of that here, but the construction. I would like to see a full body cheeseburger paragraph. Yeah, you have the permission to leave our domes. Do you think she does our food allotments and wish you were signing your jobs? You can't speak. Yeah. Turn this crap off. I want to see some voices. Let's get some voices. Because I, I, I end up just putting them in there. Uh, turn this crap off. I'm speaking over the shadow. Wait, wait. So wait doesn't need to go, but I want to hear this can stay. Um, Mom's jaw voice. Jaw's drops. Uh, is that's maybe not uh, as glued to the 3D projection. Maybe describe that foreign concept a little more, the foreign object. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if an object moves your plot, describe it. Uh, so we had, we do have some healthy descriptions of that actual projection. What about the, uh, the thing, <laughs> the thing that's coming out of it? It's like a big oval or, I don't know. Uh, intergalactic tyrants. I would change that name, Ugolithi. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I, maybe there's a rhyme or reason to it. Uh, sometimes they're unnecessarily confusing. Um, sometimes. Uh, maybe cut down the synony uh, synonyms a little bit. Uh, causing the earth, how many limits do we have? Every major decision we do, the sound vanishes. Woo! Uh, what sound? Specific sensory detail, please. But we do got a loud slap right there. Very cool. Slammed her phone down. Slow down. Foreign object. How did her phones look? Are you happy treason was uttered in this house by that hacker? Needs a question mark. Uh, double check. That's the, <laughs> that's just the editor and me and like, uh, doing this. If I had this manuscript, it, it would look uh, a lot different. Um, definitely, uh, with, I think if somebody sent this my way to ghostwrite, the first thing I would do is highlight the most important concepts and then highlight it in a different color, the least important concepts. Then keep the middle stuff regular and elevate what's the most important and redact completely what is not, uh, new and long time ago. 
Uh, my sister's looking across the room. Should we try to leave? And then I was like, Lord. so I'm looking for the inciting incident. It looks like this could be certain, certainly fit that mold a little bit. Uh, as we know, the inciting incident kicks off the story at large. We usually don't find it in that first chapter, but sometimes we do. This main character needs to be elevated a lot, a lot more. Like, so her whole family, there's a, like, uh, what can I say? This? There's like a lot of time for like each and every one of her family members. I would rather take all of that time, put it on the main character, really get a nice, lovable, amazing main character, and then just a little bit of spice on the rest. Like, I would consider the main character like a full five-star dish, and then kind of like the other ones is like little tiny appetizers. Uh, yeah, that's exactly it. Maybe she's the pizza. <laughs> she's the nice pizza and the family members of the mozzarella sticks. Um, yeah, because right now they're, it's almost like they're sharing it. It's like it's kind of weird. It's like everybody's part of the pizza. Uh, doesn't need to be that way. I want that main character right there. That I want a wonderful main character. Uh, let's see. What things here? Lame attempt. Then using the intentions. Name. I would actually eliminate some of those characters, uh, the sisters, unless they play some big role later. Um, I would get them out of there, or maybe one or two. I'm like maybe if they're kidnapped, like if they're playing the innocent archetype and the Jungian archetype. So I have the video on there about the Jungian archetypes. Maybe that might make sense if, like, let's say they get kidnapped or something, or they contribute to character development. Maybe they die. I don't know. <laughs> but if they're there as dead weight, uh, I would definitely eliminate them. Uh, double check for purpose, because I'd rather have one president than two sisters that are backgrounds. Um, maybe. Uh, okay, because we're at six. I'd like to see that list. Uh, great way to my birthday. Uh, happy birthday, sweetie. Uh, the Dinkus can go. There's no need for that. It's not uh, this hashtag thing. Uh, that's uh, Dinkus should also be in the middle. Uh, but yeah, the hashtag does not need to be there. That can go. Um, Dinkuses are used to show the specific passage of time. Specific. Uh, the check as I look the last item at four. Bedroom joy. Point of the ignoring us. Walk in the plug room. Double check. I looked out on my empty plate. Breakfast over. Cake. They had cake and breakfast. Uh, we had a small moon. Space occupied by five steel pots. There you go. Freeze. <laughs> Freeze there. Let's let's elevate that. Elevate that right there. Ba boom. Uh, that could easily occupy a lot of this. Just uh, because I've seen this. We've seen this before. You know, like maybe in like Star Wars or Star Trek or you know. Yeah, I've seen this plenty of times where there's like there's pods or maybe there's escape pods or something like that. How can you make yours unique? You know, let's how can you? Oh, uh, what was that movie? Um, it's it's not Alien, but it was like a, a predecessor to Alien. Man, that was pretty cool. They had pods there. Oh no, it was fucking. It was uh, sorry for swearing. It was don't don't hate, don't hate me, YouTube. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think it was like Cloverfield something. Like it was like a Cloverfield spinoff, and they had that. Maybe have a good day at school. Okay, education is part of world building. Ba boom, ba boom. Let's see. Uh, so is she gonna well I grin it's my birthday you see that can go uh, Sophia I love the name Sophia one of my favorite names in Greek it means wisdom uh, I would also just for that if you if you wanted to I would spell it PH uh, traditional Greek Sophia Sophia meaning wisdom very cool uh, another thing too the first AI robot by Hanson Robotics <laughs> is named Sophia uh, just uh, I would I would change it to Sophia uh, PH, but that's up to you, of course. I'm just glad they have that name in there. Uh, while they undergo the plug-in process, we'll load them our pod. Most part of this stage. Why? I'm, I'm now, now the reader dissonance in my mind is going, okay, so in our era right now, in our era now, we're able to give people uh, artificial prosthetics, and that's becoming a, a razor fast, and that's, that's really going fast. So if we're far in the future, far, far in the future, I'm asking myself, why does she have a wheelchair? When we, right now, in our day and age, we have, uh, you know, soldiers coming back from, you know, uh, the Middle East, and they have prosthetics. Why is she opting for a wheelchair? I'm imagining by that time, you know, thousands and thousands of years, or actually, it's not even, it's not even descriptive, uh, or rather, it's not, it's not shown that timeline. Watch your timelines, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want to get to the end of chapter two, then I, we got to stop at 30 minutes. I always go over because I like it. Uh, British accent. So we are on Earth. We are on Earth. What timeline? Definitely, definitely going to be double checking for that. Just go our program my AIs to speak with a British accent. Oh, that's funny. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, my goodness. It's back the shock, but isn't it funny? You know what would be kind of cool, too, dude? Uh, there's AI writing now, which is, like, just crazy. Oh, I forgot what it... It's, like, quill pad or something. It's, like, this... Uh, uh, it's like this online thing. Maybe it'd be kind of funny if, uh, uh, like the main character's like, "Oh, you know, I had my AI write a book," and then you put a like a AI description there. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, never feel, but those tend to be really weird. Uh, just kind of like a, as a, kind of like a prop, not like actual part of the story, but almost like a prop. I can already feel a literary prop. I can feel my files corrupting. Chuck answers. Chuck, who be Chuck now? Who that? Uh, that went right over my head. Uh, thanks, Chuck. Um, I don't like to expect space <laughs> during these, uh, uh, cause yeah, double check. Uh, I snort, but very kind of you keep me alive and that primary doesn't exist. Uh, so that's seven characters. Definitely checking that. Uh, let's not necessarily isolate the cast cause science fiction does sometimes, it really kind of goes either way where there's a lot of characters or there's a confined cast of characters. Uh, you actually see that in sci-fi horror a lot when there's that, that confined cast. Um, usually that's pretty good. Usually that often plays better too sometimes because that's the me memorability factor. Uh, so the main character, it's hard to picture. She's a silhouette character, same with the other characters. Uh, all that time and attention spent describing the totality of the five, I would bring that down and put that place towards the main character. Uh, let's double check. Sentient machines, they start beginning kitchen. Interesting. Yeah, when you see things like that come up, double check, elevate, and then ask yourself, how can I make this unique to my world? Keyword unique. Uh, like, how can I make this something that's been seen before and make it something totally new? Uh, but also still good. Uh, like the pods, for example, that could be good. The 3D projection, that could be good. Uh, these are things we've seen, like, many, many times. Uh, um, especially just, <laughs> just manuscripts all the time. So th I think the success from that, I definitely see that a lot, is when they make it something brand new. Or rather, something that uh, has its own spin on it. Even like these small little nuances, because keep in mind, uh, fantasy and sci-fi, really heavy on the world building. Uh, so double check that. Uh, so I mean, that's why you read sci-fi book. That's why you read fantasies, because the well, ma fantasy we got we got that action in there too. Sometimes sci-fi's got the action, but we want to get lost in the world. So know your demographic, know what they're looking for, because uh, you know at the same time we don't want to kind of uh, put like scatterbrain conversation. Not necessarily saying this is scatterbrain, but it could be elevated to help elevate plot and contribute to that world building. She was doing that before very well, and I like that. Small machines where well, the silver snakes are activating. Uh, a lot of valuable page space is being taken up by these onion chops. Um, now, the margins, I complimented the side margins. It, when it's done being edited, uh, it probably won't look like that. But what I would do is I would, I would slim down the top margins and the bottom margins just a little bit, like by 0.5, get more uh, space in there for work. Uh, less is more, yes, but watch out for the onion chops. Uh, that's a big thing in my beta reads. When I see these, I'm like, uh-oh, careful. Uh, careful, careful, careful. It's not that they're so bad, but when there's an excess and, that, and when it's off balance, you want to have that narrative dialogue balance. The low humming rose. Nah. I'm looking for elements of the inciting action, this inciting incident, if it's not clear. Uh, we'll stop here. Chapter, no, I want to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to speed this one. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, Okay, chapter three. This is where the rising action should be very clear kicking off. Uh, fog recedes from my vision, and I focus on the ceiling behind crown molding. Uh, I would elevate that initial transition in. Uh, and circles in the muted color. Kind of go play the chandelier. No, what well, a nice elevation of setting there. Really nice. Uh, the better line. Very nice setting. Look at that. Ba boom. Now, if you could, if you combined all of this and then redacted some of the unnecessary glue words to make a cohesive cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, that would be awesome. Um, rustic boots, like, uh, tap the tails. Maybe combine all these and then uh, redact what doesn't need to be there. The feature of the haven here. The haven. Uh, the haven. Uh, this reminds me of the show Future Man. Uh, Future Man is just kind of, it's very similar to like this, except it's a, it's a science fiction comedy. It's not a book, it's a, it's a TV show and where they all live in the pods and <laughs> and then uh, the guy from uh, what's his close corners of the fourth kind, uh, the kid, and he's in there. Uh, that's so funny. Except he's grown up, Haley Joe Osman. Oh my goodness. Uh, is that his name? Uh, Haley Joe Osman. Uh, surprise. I didn't mean to scare you. Now I'm looking for tension here. Now we're, I, the inciting incident needs to be a bit more clear. So double check, like, know your landmarks, know where you're going. Uh, on a separate notes page, I usually recommend, you know, write out your landmarks and their places in the plot structure. 
so we don't get lost. A lot of people are Harry Plotters. Some people are off the covers. Uh, really depends. I've usually found that uh, they always need a converge in a way. So like if somebody writes off the top of their head, they end up going, oh, you know, now I got to go back and do the plot structure. And then sometimes people stick to plot uh, that plot template so much that it's kind of stale. Uh, you definitely want to get in the middle. Like you don't want to have like an absence of notation, but you don't want to have too much. It doesn't need to be so strict. Uh, basically, you don't want to have that loosey goosey feel. But <laughs> at the same time, you don't want to have that uh, strict, like no room for change type of feel either. Um, it should be fluid, uh, but at the same time, during tension, it should turn it away. If, uh, like Bruce Lee said, it should be like water. Uh, right here, it's a little choppy. Um, for avatars, right here, touche. Uh, yeah, like there doesn't need to be these onion chops. They can go. Uh, eliminate. Uh, most authors will find out less is more. Um, usually it comes from the redaction. The redaction process is often uh, the important one because you realize, oh, you know, there's so much stuff that I didn't need and it's taking away from the stuff that is very important. Uh, happy birthday and can't wait till classes is over. The birthday the birthday is getting almost more attention than the world building, so double check that. It's definitely got more attention than the character profile. Um, so this character profile, the main character is not elevated uh, to rather, or rather not enough to, I believe, stand completely on its own legs. Oh, well, <laughs> she's disabled, but you know you know what I mean. Uh, I would give her prosthetics or something. I don't know. I would, I would address that because that, at least for me, is bringing up that reader dissonance. That's when you kind of sit back and go, wait, wait, you know, why doesn't she do that? Like, it's kind of like uh, contradictions. And despite the Ungaluthu. Ungaluthi. I would change that name, uh, United Nations. I would, yeah, world build. Like, I want to see what happened to all the nations. Uh, yeah, know what your demographic wants. So double check. Alien technology here. Yeah, so she's using dialogue to move. Or she, he is using dialogue to move forward. That's good. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, can you get the soft box? Celebrate your birthday. Dan doesn't reply. Uh, yeah, so uh, usually a lot of times these uh, onion chops make things very asymmetrical and it throws things off balance. And it's very skimmable. Oh, so double check that. Uh, in, in like an odd way. <laughs> like, so our eyes are going like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like going uh, like 90 degree sharp angles. You want, you want to read in kind of like these curves. And at the same time, you don't want to read with internal dialogue. You want to read by projecting imagery. So that's why imagery is so important. Our subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what is real and what is fake. So this is why imagery is very important. Same, same thing about writing in present tense. That's why it's such, a, such an effective thing to do. Oh, my goodness. Uh, code writer or something. Yeah, uh, occupation is part of the character profile. Good, check. Uh, blood red, ruby, sparkles on the right. The more enemies kill with the blade. Now we're getting a little violent. <laughs> uh, slow down. Stay there. Uh, focus up and build that up because that's what I want to read. Now I'm going, okay, look, this is going to be a space fight. I don't. I want to see the space fight. I don't want to see the birthday party. Uh, I also don't want to see these uh, hashtags. Uh, they can go... Uh, I'm sure they're just placeholders, but... Uh, like freshly fallen, so like that's a that's a waste of valuable real estate. Um, like uh, we eventually <laughs> we find out, you know, we've all gone through this where uh, we kind of like kind of different. Like we we, we want to elevate. Well, maybe this is not exactly what the author is trying to do, but I see this all the time where they're they're doing these enter space enter space to kind of fluff up their novel. I'm not saying this author's doing it, but I see it all the time. No, no, no. Use that page space wisely. I'd rather have a nice, quicker read that has everything present than a, a large read with a lot of fluff. So double check that. Um, like, uh, maybe not here. My breath fog hangs and in the air. Interesting. Um, this isn't hard to climb. It's Jim Beasley, we're talking. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I would definitely re elev I would redo that onion shot, but I think there's some good stuff happening in the mix there. Because they're using uh, dialogue to elevate setting, which is what I love to see. Uh, press of shadow, cover the plan, and we're almost done here. <laughs> oh my goodness. I definitely, I always go over to, I'm like, all right, we're going to stay for 20 minutes. Uh, and then ba-boom. So right here, as I reach the top, that's kind of like that cheeseburger paragraph I'm kind of talking about where it's got the healthy five sentences. Uh, that's awesome. And then we got the sandwich underneath there. Uh, and then a little bit of the onion chop, right? And they, it, they're all right there. Um, the cheeseburger, the sandwich, and then the onion chop. Yeah, although this one has uh, three sentences. Let's double check. Dad and I give each other a look. Gold hands. Now this is cool. So now we're going to get some action. So gold sword with the 
Uh, that kind of came in fast too. I would eliminate the whole birthday party. I would eliminate all this, all this you know kind of boring stuff, and bring this to the forefront, and then then bring that stuff in later if it needs to be like during reprieve moments, and during like maybe maybe they could talk about how the birthday. I would make it like a an event of the past, and then put this right where it needs to be because that's exactly what I want to see. Uh, cause now it already seems like two different novels when that stuff comes up. I would keep that in the spotlight. No, no one to put like, no what to put in the spotlight. This is getting awesome now. Ruby swords. Like that's sick. Uh, I don't want to storm this word, but how can you make that sci-fi too? Cause you know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we don't want lightsabers, but at the same time we, this is, I don't know. I love the wet cause that brings in the weapon system and that the weapon system slash magic system. There's so much you could do there. And uh, I think that is probably one of the most unique parts of this is the ruby gold sword. What the? Like, that's awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've never seen that in fantasy or anything. Like, that's cool. Uh, unseen force. Yeah, I would eliminate uh, all that all that fluff. Bring in this, this part. Like, if I opened this novel and I saw this expansive world building and this magic system, this weapon system, elevated setting, and then a beautifully elevated character profile. I'll take out the mom. I'll take out the uh, sisters. And just keep the main, the dad, and maybe uh, the president as that nice little uh, cameo. But uh, with that being said, that's it. Uh, good job. Fantastic novel. Uh, keep a lookout for this author. Of course, every author has to do redax, and it's okay. Redress. That's part of the process, ladies and gentlemen. So get out there. Get that 500 words in there today. Get that 1,000 words in there, and keep on writing. Good job. I like this one a lot. And the ending, the, what I got right there was this sick. I, I Nice little cool weapon system at the end. That's great. Uh, yep. See you guys later.